This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The Band API's Level 200 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle fulfills in trusted application development. It also provides an overview of the Microsoft SDL Band APIs, which is a list of C programming language functions which, when used incorrectly, can easily lead to severe security vulnerabilities. In addition to discussing band functions, this presentation also discusses how to detect instances of band functions and provides safer alternatives to those functions as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. Addressing the subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. In this presentation, we will complete an overview of the Microsoft SDL and the Microsoft SDL Band APIs. We will also discuss techniques that may be used to detect instances of band functions in code. The presentation will conclude by providing an overview of safer alternatives that may be employed in lieu of band functions, as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. The specific alternatives to band APIs that will be discussed in this presentation are StirSafe and SafeCRT. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, an executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL, and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement rather than disrupt the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements, exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, Threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyzed with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is a quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. 
During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities, mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is optional, operational and used by the customers. In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on the Microsoft SDL Band APIs. With respect to specific phases of the Microsoft SDL, the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list is applied during the implementation and verification phases. When developing applications, it has been Microsoft's experience that certain functions within the C runtime library, when used incorrectly, can lead to serious vulnerabilities in code. For example, C runtime functions such as stircopy and stircat, when called incorrectly, can lead to a serious vulnerability known as a buffer overrun. The Microsoft SDL Band APIs is a documented list of such functions that are prohibited for use in new applications developed by Microsoft. Band functions must be removed from legacy applications over time. Any application that is to be developed in conformance with the prescribed practices of the Microsoft SDL process must adhere to this list. Removing the use of band functions from applications is an effective way of reducing risk of application attacks by malicious users with very little engineering effort. Preventing the use of band functions early in the software development lifecycle rather than later in the software development lifecycle can save organizations significant engineering efforts. As you will see later in this presentation, several past Microsoft security bulletins have been attributed to the incorrect use of functions like these. You will notice that the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list focuses almost exclusively on preventing the use of functions that can lead to buffer overflows. The Microsoft SDL team will be updating this list as new threats that can be effectively mitigated by using safer functions and libraries emerge. It is important to mention that the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list is development platform independent. Development teams engineering applications based on Microsoft platforms and non-Microsoft platforms such as Linux can greatly benefit from this list. It is important to mention that the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list is most useful to organizations in scenarios where application source code is available. In situations where a library is used without the availability of source code, additional care such as only using that library in a least privileged scenario should be taken. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated into its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation focusing on band APIs, are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. Provided in the slide is a sample of current functions listed in the Microsoft SDL band APIs list. As you may notice, several commonly used functions such as stircopy and stircat have been banned by the Microsoft SDL for use in all new applications. That is, any application that is to be developed in conformance with the prescribed practices of the Microsoft SDL process must not use any of these banned functions. In addition to specifying banned functions, the Microsoft SDL banned APIs list also specifies the appropriate functions that should be used in lieu of the banned functions. These safer alternative libraries will be discussed in more detail later in this presentation. More than a hundred different functions are listed as band functions in the Microsoft SDL band APIs list. The full list can be found in Chapter 19 of the Microsoft SDL book or online on MSDN. Here are examples of previous Microsoft security bulletins and patches that help to establish the need for banning certain functions. 
For Microsoft, the incorrect use of banned APIs in applications have required the creation of numerous Microsoft Security Bulletins and accompanying patches. Each of these bulletins require an intensive engineering process to fix the affected code and to produce a remediating patch. Additionally, several lengthy test passes are performed by verification teams to better ensure that the patch does not negatively impact other systems or applications. Deployment strategies for distributing the patch to customers must also be planned, executed, and verified. Documentation to inform customers must be prepared and distributed through various channels. All of these steps in this extensive process result in significant effort and cost due to the incorrect use of a single C runtime function. Since prohibiting the use of banned functions in new applications through the Microsoft SDL, Microsoft has experienced significantly less reported vulnerabilities in its products. As a result, Microsoft has had to commit less engineering resources for producing security bulletins, which has resulted in significant development savings. For more information regarding banned APIs, I encourage you to visit Microsoft's TechNet website at the URL provided in the slide. The C and functions are often used by developers due to their considering them as a safe alternative to banned functions. In Microsoft's experience, the end functions themselves are difficult to use and are just as likely to be misused as their less secure counterparts. As a result, Microsoft has also banned the use of the end functions in new applications. In particular, the end functions do not null terminate overflow buffers. This can become problematic since other functions reading these unterminated buffers have no means of knowing where the buffer logically ends. Not having this information could lead to buffer overflow conditions in code. Also, whenever a buffer overflow occurs, no indication by the end functions is ever given to the developer. Let's now see an example of why the end functions may be difficult for developers to use safely. Here is a classic example of why end functions can be problematic. Can you see the problem with this code? The problem is that during the stir and copy of PSZ source into SZ desk buffer, if PSZ source is greater than or equal to 50 bytes, stir and copy will not null terminate SZ desk. This is actually expected behavior as it is defined in the C99 or ISO IEC 9899 1999 specification. Since the destination buffer is not null terminated, it can cause unexpected application behavior and could also cause a buffer overflow condition later in code. The end functions can be an effective alternative to banned functions if they are used correctly. If organizations choose to continue to use the end functions, then extra care is required by developers to ensure that the size of destination buffers have been correctly calculated. Due to the extra care required to use the end functions and the ease with which these functions can still lead to serious vulnerabilities, Microsoft has chosen to take the more defensive approach by banning the end functions for use in new applications per the Microsoft SDL. In lieu of the banned functions, including the end functions, Microsoft recommends stir-safe and safe CRT as safer alternatives. Both of these alternatives will be discussed later in this presentation. Prohibiting the use of banned functions in applications can greatly reduce the overall exposure to attack. These banned functions can be detected in several ways. For developers using Microsoft Visual Studio 2005, the compiler will automatically emit warning messages whenever it detects a banned function instance at compile time. All C4996 compiler warnings should be investigated to ensure that the function being flagged is not banned for use. In addition to C4996 warnings, developers should also be wary of pragma declarations that disable C4996 warnings. Another method that can be useful to detect instances of banned functions is to use the ban.h header file that is included in the Microsoft SDL book companion CD. When this header file is added as the first header file in an application, it will detect and warn developers of all banned function instances. Since C and C++ are implemented on a variety of different platforms, this header file can be used for applications built on non-Microsoft platforms. The authors of the Microsoft SDL book 
have also made this header file available as a download from the MSDN Download Center. The final method for detecting instances of band functions is through conducting a code review process. In addition to looking for common coding patterns that can lead to vulnerabilities, verification teams should also search for instances of band functions in code and for pragma declarations that disable band function warnings. In addition to documenting a detailed list of band functions, the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list also provides acceptable alternative functions that developers can use. The Microsoft SDL recommends using the functions found in StirSafe and SafeCRT as safer alternatives. Though not required by the Microsoft SDL, if you are developing an application in C++, the standard string template class can also be used as a safer replacement. It is important to note that while replacing band functions with safer alternatives can certainly improve the quality of code and reduce the exposure for attack, doing so does not guarantee a warrant applications to be free from vulnerabilities. While it may be more difficult to misuse these safer functions, misuse is still possible. Developers who use these safer, safer functions should still take care to verify that destination buffers are still correct. The first replacement library recommended by the Microsoft SDL is the StirSafe library. StirSafe is a library that provides additional processing to reduce exposure to buffer overflow attacks for C and C++ applications. The StirSafe library is distributed with the Windows Core SDK. This library has several noteworthy advantages. The first advantage is that functions in this library guarantee that all string operations are null terminated. If you recall, this was a key deficiency of the standard end functions, which did not always null terminate destination buffers. The next advantage is that all functions in this library return a status code that indicates the success or failure of a function call. Error codes are useful to developers to help them determine if an application error, such as a buffer overflow, has occurred. The final advantage is that each function in the stir-safe library requires a destination buffer size parameter, which helps ensure that the function does not write past the end of the buffer and cause a buffer overflow. Let's now see how stir-safe can be applied to existing code to make it more resilient to buffer overflow attacks. Here is some sample code that reads two character pointer parameters, S1 and S2. A buffer of 32 bytes is allocated on the stack and S1 is copied into the buffer. The parameter S2 is then concatenated into this buffer. Can anyone see what is wrong with this code? There are two key security concerns regarding this code. The first is that S1 is copied into the temp buffer without checking the size of S1 to ensure that its contents can fit within a 32 byte buffer. If the length of S1 is greater than 32 bytes, this copy operation can lead to a buffer overflow condition. The second problem is that parameter S2 is then concatenated into the temp buffer with the assumption that there is sufficient space left for S2 after the stir copy of S1 is performed. If the le length of S1 plus S2 exceeds the maximum size of the temp buffer, a buffer overflow will occur. Now let's see how stir-safe can be applied to reduce the exposure of buffer overflow attacks to this code. To use stir-safe, developers simply need to include the stir-safe.h header file and then replace each band function with the appropriate stir-safe replacement. Notice that each function returns a status code that developers can use to assess the success or failure of a function call. Fondly note that stir-safe function takes the destination buffer size parameter to ensure that the function does not write past the end of the destination buffer and create a buffer overflow condition. The C runtime library included with the Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 product and higher has been enhanced to include more secure versions of common C runtime functions. The security enhanced C runtime library is known as a safe CRT library. The Safe CRT library provides a useful feature called Secure Template Overloads. Whenever C CRT Secure CPP Overload standard names is defined to 1, the compiler will automatically change band function calls to use safer functions. This provides developers with an, an efficient way to automatically enhance older applications that may still be using band functions to use more secure versions. 
Let's now see how SafeCRT can be used to improve the resiliency of C code to buffer overflow attack. Here is some sample code that allocates a 32-byte buffer called temp onto the stack and then copies the S1 argument into temp. Can anyone see what is wrong with this code? The problem with the sample code is that if S1 is longer than 32 bytes, then the stir copy of S1 into temp will result in a buffer overflow condition. Now let's see how SafeCRT can be used to reduce the exposure of attack for this code. Like StirSafe, developers can manually fix existing code to use safer functions found in SafeCRT. However, the SafeCRT library comes with a useful feature called Secure Template Overloads. When this feature is enabled, the compiler will automatically replace banned functions with safer functions. To use Secure Template Overloads, developers need only to define CRT secure CPP overload standard names to 1. The compile will then look for banned functions and then convert banned functions into safer versions as shown below. Also, buffer sizes, if known at compile time, will be automatically provided by the compiler. There may be some confusion as to specifically which of the stir-safe and safe CRT alternative libraries developers should select when developing applications in the absence of banned APIs. Either of these libraries will be appropriate depending on specific application engineering situations. So for example, if developers are engineering kernel mode applications, stir-safe is the most appropriate library to use. However, if other vulnerabilities in addition to buffer overflows are a concern to developers, then the most appropriate library to use is the safe CRT library. In some cases, you may not have a choice. Certain banned functions may not have safer alternatives available in one library, but may have safer alternatives in another library. For example, a safer alternative function to the C runtime function, I2A, is available in safe CRT, but not in stir safe. This table appears in Chapter 19 of the Microsoft SDL book and is useful in helping developers decide which library is most appropriate for corresponding application engineering situations. This concludes the discussion on the Microsoft SDL Band APIs. When developing applications, it has been Microsoft's experience that certain functions within the C runtime library, when incorrectly used, can lead to serious vulnerabilities in code. Several Microsoft security bulletins and accompanying patches have been required due to some of these functions being incorrectly used by developers. By simply avoiding the use of these functions altogether, Microsoft could have prevented the need for several past security bulletins. Microsoft has therefore created the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list. This list documents a set of known functions that can easily lead to vulnerabilities and also provides safer function replacements. Any new application that is developed by Microsoft using the Microsoft SDL is prohibited from using these banned functions. Further, Microsoft has established a strategy to ensure that all banned functions will be removed from its legacy applications over time. Traditionally, developers look to the CN functions as a safe replacement for banned functions. However, due to the limitations of the end functions and the ease at which these functions can be misused, Microsoft has also banned the use of end functions for safer alternatives. Developers can easily de detect instances of banned functions in their code through a variety of methods. One method is to use the Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 compiler, which automatically alerts developers to the presence of banned functions. Another method is to use the band.h file that is found on the Microsoft SDL book companion CD and online on MSDN. The final method is to include flag instances of banned functions during security code reviews. The functions in stir-safe and safe CRT libraries are the recommended alternatives for functions listed in the Microsoft Band APIs list. While these alternatives make it more difficult for developers to accidentally introduce vulnerabilities into code, they can still be used incorrectly. Developers should ban the use of functions found in the Microsoft SDL Band APIs list, as well as remain vigilant in following other security implementation best practices. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically, in this presentation which focused on banned APIs, have been shared with each of you 
as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com.